We're going to take a couple of steps now to see what we need to do to actually train one of these image classification models. So first off, we're going to find some data and then we uploaded it to Vertex data sets. So you go into Vertex AI in the cloud console and then you create a data set. You've got a couple of different options here between image classification or, you know, working with tabular data, uh, trying to work with text data in sentiment analysis or classification there. And then you've also got some interesting options in video. So you can upload video, train a model that then can start to identify actions or, you know, identify objects within the videos. Um, we're going to label the data and there's a really easy way to do this by just uploading a bunch of images that are already in a particular folder, labeling them all with a, you know, a select all option and then, uh, you know, uploading the rest of your images and doing the same thing just by clicking on unlabeled. So this interface gives you the ability to, to label your data very quickly. Um, we will train a model. Uh, we'll, we'll get into, you know, how we split up data. So uh, data split is kind of a useful uh, topic just because when we have a bunch of data, we want to train a model, but we also want to validate that data, that model. So we use some of our data for training. We use some of our data for validation purposes, and then we also use uh, some of our data for testing. So you'll see how that breaks down when we actually get into investigating how the model performs and how we evaluate that model. But it's good to know that this data split is important. So even if we have, you know, a uh, hundred gigabytes of data for training, we might actually only want to use 80 or we might want to you know, train a couple of different models with different uh, random samples of that data to see how it's actually going to operate in practice. Um, we also have a, a confusion matrix so we can see how often we're right. And this will identify, you know, for each one of the labels we predict and what the actual ground truth or reality is, uh, we can see how the model will perform against each of those. And then you can also take a look at precision and recall once your model is trained. Precision is basically how many of your predictions are correct. So that's really your true positives divided by the sum of your true positives and false positives. Uh, whereas recall is really measuring how many of our predictions were missed. So that's your true positives divided by your true positive plus your false negatives. So each one of these gives you a different viewpoint on how your model performs. And for a small model that we're just training with a small set of data, these are going to not necessarily be great numbers just because, you know, if we miss one, we're going to be at 50% uh, as far as, you know, the, the confusion matrix and we're going to be in different, you know, like we're not necessarily going to have the greatest precision here. But if you had 100 images or 200 images, you might get much more interesting uh, figures here. So we'll deploy a model to an endpoint and we'll see what that looks like uh, in, in Vertex. And uh, we'll also see some of the problems that might exist with one of our models. Um, so for example, maybe we picked the wrong algorithm or we're not using the right type of model for our particular purposes. Another issue that you might run into is we just don't have the right kind of data. We don't have good data. Uh, we don't have enough data, you know, so these are all common issues when you are dealing with training models. Um, potentially your model, your data is not representative or potentially uh, you just don't have enough of it or maybe your images are just not detailed enough to provide the right, uh, right information to your model. Um, overfitting can be a problem where you train uh, on such a specific amount of data that it's very good at predicting results in your data, but not necessarily predicting generalizable results. So uh, overfitting can be an issue, especially if you look at tabular data, maybe you're training a model to just describe your data set as opposed to uh, actually training a model to fit what you're what you're trying to do generally in the world. Um, bias can be an issue, uh, you know, like there are all of the data that we have in the world may have some bias and your model is going to be no better than the data. So a lot of times what you find is historical data may have some bias the, the, or that is that exists in the world and that bias may be reflected in the data and then your model may reflect that bias. Uh, we might need to retrain um, the data based on a changing need or changing environment. Uh, drift is another situation where you train your model for a purpose, but then the world around you changes. So now your model is still making the right predictions, but not making the right predictions for the, the new reality. Uh, we almost also might run into bad feature selection or, or bad feature engineering, which can also impact our models. So all of these can cause issues as we're actually trying to train and use these models in practice. Uh, so next up, we'll take a look at how we actually work through this process of uh, training an image classification model, deploying it, and we can test it out a little bit. So you can see how this works. And this might be something that you want to use in, future, in the future for your projects. But that's all we have for now. Thank you for watching.